it is time for round 3 of the X-Men 97 episode 5. Let me explain. Is it let me explain? No, no, that's not what I was saying. It's um how it could have ended. I don't know why I just said let me explain. Well, technically it's like let me explain why I didn't really like some of the aspects or so, I didn't really like the end part of that episode. But without further ado... <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I, your one and only host, The Cosmic Jedi. Welcome back to my channel. As I stated, let us continue with a part three of this episode. You know me, boys and girls. I'm going to do a lot of back and forth, rewind, pause and play, rewind again, pause and play. And upon reassessing the video footage of the particular episode, I've realized that there's a few areas where Magneto could have done damage to this mega or Omega Sentinel mech thing. He could have done a lot of damage. Like looking at the body right now, the chest area looks like it's open. I don't know if that was if that's the design or if that's based on other people attacking the heart area. Then we have the neck. You can see the neck there with the little, I don't know, is that wires, cords? Whatever that material is, all Magneto has to do is shape or bend any metal, any form, even that train he's got, he could have flattened the thing to, to be like a huge sword and just cut the head clean off this thing. My issue is that they, they didn't show Magneto full extent of his powers. Even though one could say they got taken by surprise and he's not really fully channeling his full potential. You could argue that, but in the previous episode I recorded, you saw what um, Gambit did to two Sentinels with two cards. You saw what Gambit did to, to two Sentinels with two cards. And we know Rogue is powerful. So as I started in the first episode of this whole How It Could Have Ended um, series, I feel, again on paper, Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit could have easily, maybe not easily, but could have definitely handled this um, Mega Sentinel and the other Sentinels. And, and I'm not saying that would have happened without struggle. Struggle for sure, but definitely, definitely, they could have easily reduced the numbers of casualties or the number of casualties. Because looking right now at this, this Omega mech, I didn't even notice the neck. This is why it's good to always rewatch these episodes and just pay attention to details. Not once did they show Magneto, like imagine if, if it was a Jedi, like force pulling this, this mech or struggling to pull because he's so big. So he needs to put all of his energy. He didn't, he didn't express uh, this, this ferocity or, or need to be like, you know what? My tactics aren't working right now. Let me go for the kill shot. So taking out all the different Sentinels is cool, but the, the main problem is this thing. The other Sentinels are, are, are pain in the backside, but this main thing is much more of a problem than the other Sentinels. All of them combined, Yes, it's dangerous and obviously casualties have occurred. But to reduce further casualties, this is your main target. This is your main target. Anything you can do to disarm, disable, shut down, and most importantly, go for the power source or power core that is um, allowing this Omega Sentinel to run. So it's like going for the all spark, for example, in, in the Transformer. Find it. Even if you're trying to dent the metal and the metal is a different alloy, like I said in my previous video, maybe the metal is a different alloy, but they didn't state that. So I'm not here to do maybes. I'm going off what was given to us and it's a very poor display of all three mutants' powers. Poor display. Very, very poor display. Just only Gambit I can give thumbs up for, for sure, because I didn't even know that's, that's how good he was or that's how skilled he was with his charge and release playing cards. I just thought the thing could just blow up, blow up rocks. And I thought because the way the Sentinels are built, the density, their mass, whatever um, alloy they've used to build their body would take a little longer to dent or bend or destroy. Hence, when um, Wolverine would fight a Sentinel, it's easier for him because his, his claws are made of adamantium. Yeah, it'd be easier to cut through. So I imagine if you had a Samurai Sword, it would take a while. Or maybe a Samurai Sword might break against a Sentinel, but you put Wolverine against a Sentinel, it'd be like slice and dice easy. So... With that um, comparison, I can say, okay, Samurai Sword would, would even stand, stand a chance against a Sentinel's um, body. But Wolverine's claws, of course, 
So with that, with that same comparison, you have a, 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 a mutant who can bend metal. He can shape metal into anything he wants to do. He can do origami with freaking steel. And you're telling me he couldn't find creative ways to disarm the Sentinel. This scene right here, and I'm about to replay again when I played it in the previous episode, using a train to hit the head of, of a Sentinel, that, is not, that would not be my main, main strategy at all. It's like trying to slap a lion. Whatever you need to do, you make sure that thing doesn't even pierce your skin with its jaw or teeth, let alone its claws. You're a metal bender. Instead of hitting metal, rip the metal apart. Bend the metal, pull, the th pull things apart, and then have this sentinel panic so much it's going to start losing his shit and just beaming, beaming. We know he's already got the shield around him, so he could have used that to his, his, his advantage. And even if he got tired of having to re-energize and put the shield on, then all the dead sentinels that, that are around him, pull them up, pull them up. Use them as little shields against the beam coming towards him. Also, maybe use it as armor, like Iron Man. No one man should have all that power. Put all the metal around you, and whilst you're doing that, still focus your energy against this dude. Two kill, po kill, kill points right now on this thing, as I'm looking at right now. The chest, the head. You can tell those things are wires. You can tell they are wires, and if you're saying it's still wires, you'd have to explain to me how this thing was built in the first place. Maybe the, the, the last... I don't know, is it two episodes left or three episodes will describe how this thing was built. But upon looking at it right now, it is it's poor display of Magneto's power. It's very, very, very poor. You're showing me a scene where Magneto's lost his shit. He's angry. He's tense. He's getting flashbacks, P uh, PTSD. I'm thinking the next thing he's going to do, go Super Saiyan and start ripping this thing, you know, bit, bit by bit. For me, it's, it's a very poor display of um, his mutant powers, but let's proceed anyway. Look at that. It's a pushback. See, he's still pushing back. I don't understand that. I don't know why they, they chose this display of Magneto's powers out of a plethora of things they could have done. Like I said, get one of the metal cars you're throwing at him. If you're throwing one, two, three, shape one into a fat disc, a very thin disc, wide enough to just go through the head. And even if, it's, if the cords are made of really thick metal, at least show him just chopping, chopping, blocking the beam, getting hit again, then Ro comes through, push, and maybe she holds, maybe he literally forms a sword and she holds, I don't, dude, they could have, because if Ro can hold a sentinel's head and sumo slam the dude or the thing, then you, you can make Rogue hold a tail end of a makeshift sword by, Mag, by Magneto and just chip in at the head of this thing whilst he's pulling from the other side as well. Because it, it, in essence, he's almost like a metal bender and uh, uh, a Jedi at the same time. Meaning, I'm just saying in, in terms of how you use his, um, his powers of magnetism. That's why I keep saying bending. You can shape metal to how you want it to look. But you're telling me you couldn't... Uh, why? They didn't even show him trying to, to pry open his chest from afar, like, you know, rip it open because it, it's, it's a dead giveaway. So I'm thinking, when I first saw the shot of the train going straight at the Sentinel, I thought, okay, he's going for that chest. That, it's smart because even the design of the chest, it looks like the Death Star in Star Wars. Like, okay, it, this, it's clear there's something here we could use to our advantage. Just keep throwing things in there. It's not closed. I mean, maybe it's, it's, it's black as a black design, but at least try, show this guy trying to stop this thing. This thing is not powered by uh, um, dust or, or ghosts. It's powered by something inside it. Find its power source, rip it open, crush that thing. And I imagine if you crush the power source, the, 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 the other sentinels connected to it will just fall. And if, if not, then at least you have less... Um, of a worry to deal with because now you've taken on the main asshole, you can go for the other ones and your Magneto. So it's easy. By the time they fly out, halt, 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 crush, crush, crush. You crush them like little little bugs. Crush, 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 sit down. Or as it's releasing all the um, different Sentinels, like I said in the previous video, control them, turn them against the main Sentinel. This is Magneto we're talking about. This is practically the god of metal. God of magnetism. You're telling me you couldn't control the Sentinels and use it? I thought they were, going to, they were going to spice up this episode. Especially after witnessing all the people who just died. Poor use of his powers, man. Look at that. He's just hitting, hitting. You're not, you're not tearing apart. You're not chipping at the metal. It's such a strange scene. He knows Callisto will find us. If not her, Magneto. He promised Leech would never be scared again. The 
X-Men are no friends to the Morlocks. I gotta give him A plus for showing um, Gambit's skills, which I gotta give him A plus because Gambit, this is Gambit's episode. I don't know why they chose to make it like that because they could have easily done it in a, in a way where the trio, Gambit, Rogue, and Magneto, could have come out demigods. They could have come out like demigods, but at least they did your boy good. Even I was like, oh, so, you, so this is what he's capable of? Say less. Say less. I just hope they do not undo this as well because let him stay dead. Don't undo it by some future time travel cable episode and they might. What, what do I care? I, I could say I hope they don't and they're still going to do it. It's already written, it's already edited and it's just waiting to be uploaded uh, for us to, to, to stream on, on release day. It, they did your boy real good. Real good. And the music too. The music, the sound effects, everything. The sound work for this episode. Mwah, 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 correctly done. Correctly done. You see what I'm saying? This is what Gambit's cards can do or Gambit's powers can do on a charged object. And I don't even know if the cards that he uses are metal or I don't know what material they are. Maybe all the comic book fans or comic book um, heads can let me know in the comments. So he just threw one or two or whatever and let's just go before and after. Yeah, he threw one card. He could easily also touch it and boom. He just threw a card and what was there before is taking, practically taking out the whole metal. There's no way uh, Trask would have built this thing with thin metal because this is supposed to be an efficient machine going against mutants that he knows can control the weather. Magneto can shape metal. Um, who else? Uh, levitation, te telekinesis. So he has to build machines that can withstand um, practically the force of nature. So if, if there's a, a, a tornado, if there's a snowstorm, they won't shut down easily. So Trask had to think ahead and say, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build these machines to stop these creatures because some of them are potentially dangerous. Some of them probably could probably um, ignite their finger and it would be a nuclear bomb. They don't even have to build a nuclear bomb. They're practically nuclear bombs. Just snap a finger and then boom. So we need to build a machine that is that can withstand any of these mutants and sometimes even uh, um, learn some of their powers. So it makes sense that the metal will be thicker than anything we've seen, thicker than a car or tanker. Is it tank or tanker? So uh, thicker than, I don't know, fighter jet, whatever it is, whatever metal or the, the strongest metal we're used to, they would have probably reinforced um, the Sentinels to have more of that. Gambit just did, <laughs> just tore apart his metal with a card. I'm, I'm drawing attention to these points for a reason. So bear with me. Let's continue. Look at that. He's practically opened the head of this thing with this card. It's like holding a magnum point blank and then boom, on RPG. He's literally the inside of the head of the Sentinel. So we just visualizing this, knowing what Gambit can do. Why isn't he with Magneto right now? Or why, why didn't they have a huddle, huddle up and say, yo, what can we do? Like I said in the previous episode, I would have asked, if I was Magneto, I would have asked Gambit, what's popping? What is the extent of your powers? Because I know you, I know you can do this. Because Magneto is joining the crew. So asking each mutant, what is your skill set, Wolverine, Cyclops, how far can that beam go? Especially when he, he, Cyclops did the beam thing in the desert. So we know, we know Homeboy's got potential. He's got potential. Jubilee, what can you do? Especially when we saw Jubilee's future version of herself come and we saw the powers that she displayed. So we know her powers aren't just meek and, and giddy giddy. They're capable of doing correct damage. So someone who... Xavier put in charge um, to look after the X-Men, it would have been uh, uh, wise to have an episode where Magneto is testing each of their skills and their potential. So that way we can be a low-key lead up to this episode in case something like this happened. And then at least he'd have had that previous conversation and knowing, okay, at least I know what my mutants are capable of. And I, even though we haven't got the whole crew, I know what Gambit can do. I know what Rogue can do because me and Rogue are close like that. So now I know what Gambit can do. All right, you know what? The other Sentinels, let me handle them. I'm going to take you to the main, main boy, rip apart the core, send you in there, charge your shit, send him home. There, there are ways you could have done, done this episode differently and much better and still killed Gambit. Gambit would have been like the whole sacrificial lamb thing. Go in there, charge. He's not intending to, to die, obviously. Charging and before he leaves the place or Magneto 
will have maybe a metal, have a metal strap around him, for example, so that way he can push and pull him. So throw him in there, have metal around him, and then deal with all the other sentinels. Whilst this main one is, is panicking, then the main one probably sends sentinels from inside itself to crawl through like a zombie scene or, or, or something like that, trying to get at Gambit. And when Gambit is just charging, can he, you can just hear the, the sentinels coming through because it's a big mech. So you can just about hear the sentinels coming through, charge, 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 charge. He's like, okay, done. Before Magneto pulls him out again with the force push or force pull, then the sentinel grabs him. By, by that time, it's too late. Boom. And with the boom, that, that force, uh, that bl uh, the push of the blast pushing him away because Rogue can handle it, but still Magneto cares for Rogue. He pushes his force field wi wider and then uh, protects himself and Rogue. They fall down. Rogue flies back there again, realizes Gambit, Gambit is dead. Gambit still dies. I'm not saying don't kill Gambit. I'm saying you could have ended this threat a lot easier or with a lot more finesse. Gambit is the only one, you know, pulling his finesse right now. Even Rogue was struggling with the other Sentinel earlier on, getting pinned against the wall. That's whack to me. Gambit, who doesn't even have any superhuman powers per se, like uh, he's not strong like Rogue or strong like Captain America, but he's holding his own. He just opened this dude's head <laughs> with one card. God, God damn. Me? Now kindly follow me. And I'm still wondering what the other mutants who had, you know, um, capable powers were doing. I get it. Earlier on, Gambit said not many of them could, they couldn't dent the main sentinel or the main mech. This is why I said earlier on in my head, okay, this is your main boy. Magneto will have to go Super Saiyan, God mode, Omega. He would have to go beyond his own current capabilities or our, our known collective capabilities of Magneto. Especially when that line said they couldn't make a dent on this thing. It's all right, cool. Hand back, boys. Let me do it myself. Then it's, there's nothing wrong with that. We know we're always about to go crazy, especially when it's metal. It's This is the god of metal and the sentinels you sent to my house to cause me wahala a made of metal. Stand back. Stand back, boys and girls. Let's, let's do this. It would have been a quick thing. I'm not saying no struggle, but it would have been a quick thing and it, there would have been a, a beautiful... It would have been a beautiful display of his powers with more finesse, more sweetness, more spice, more fire. I'm Magneto, god of magnetism, king of metal bending. And you're telling me I'm beating a sentinel on its head with a train? Fuck, man. Now look, please observe this scene. Observe this scene, please. I beg of you. I beg of you, observe the scene. Let's proceed. Look what Gambit is doing. He took off his scarf. Seeing the, the one leg of this sentinel is coming at them. He took off his scarf. Watch this. Do you see what Rogue just did right now? Rogue, that's how Rogue should have been going through every sentinel that came through. Pam, 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 pam. Even before you see a hand reach, before the hand even reaches at her and touches her, Magneto just shifts the hand away. So you just see the hand going for Rogue. Like, what the, then... Rogue goes through his neck. This, you should have, this, they should have had a sexy ass tag team between the three of them on these cocksucking sentinels. Again, I say it one last time. I'm not saying without struggle. Include the struggle, keep Gambit's death permanent, but show some extra finesse, some ingenuity, some talent, some spice, some fire, because we know they are capable of doing it. What took me by surprise is definitely Gambit's display of powers, because I was expecting Magneto, the one who can bend fucking metal, to do his job but instead the way they wrote the story was such a lack of, i'm like nah you're trying to do something but you didn't do it well you can still do it well by showing yo this is a struggle but we got this then have your boy die nothing wrong with that perfect ending sad yes but perfect because they put up a good fight look how ro just tore through that thing that's how she should be going through every sentinel pam 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 quick time no hesitation i wouldn't even let a sentinel touch me to pin me against the wall i'm freaking rogue bitch I'm going through all you cocksuckers like fire, quick. Let's take that back one more time. Look at what Gambit did to your boy. Come on, son.